A turning point has been reached in the continuing discussion over the African National Congress, ANC, and its leadership. Before we continue, please kindly hit on the subscribe button. President Cyril Ramaphosa is now being called on to be removed, and many are pleading with the National Executive Committee, NEC, to act swiftly before it's too late. There has been an increasing chorus calling for the ANC to take a firm stand on President Ramaphosa's future. Opponents claim that the party's popularity has significantly decreased under his leadership, but it is important to take into account the possibility of taking such a bold action. Up until now, the NEC has been more likely to back Ramaphosa, emphasizing his leadership above tackling the larger issues the ANC is facing. Ramaphosa's leadership has come under growing criticism from the public. Many think that taking him out of power is the only way to revitalize the ANC. According to this viewpoint, the NEC has a decision. It must decide whether to prioritize the party's comeback or to keep supporting Ramaphosa. There are no other possibilities, according to the argument, and the NEC's choice will have a big effect on the party's future. It's important to note that Ramaphosa's administration has had several difficulties. His presidency has been tarnished by accusations of corruption, economic difficulties, and internal party strife. Critics respond that he hasn't done enough to stop the public's trust from decreasing, despite his supporters saying he has worked nonstop to fight corruption and stabilize the economy. Many political observers believe that a mix of wider structural flaws and leadership concerns inside the party is to blame for the ANC's present situation. Ramaphosa took over a party that was already in disarray, and while he has achieved progress in some areas, there is still a general belief that his leadership has not produced the anticipated revolution. The NEC's choice will ultimately constitute a turning point in the ANC's history. The party's course may drastically change if they decide to oust Ramaphosa, opening the door for new tactics and leaders. On the other hand, if they want to keep backing him, they need to deal with the fundamental problems that caused the public support to drop. It remains to be seen which course the NEC will take. But one thing is certain. The ANC's survival is in jeopardy, and the choices taken in the next days, weeks, and months will have a lasting impact on South Africa's democratic system. Once more, there may be a change in the political landscape of South Africa as a result of the emergence of political parties and movements that are threatening the African National Congress's ANC hegemony. The opponents of the GNU, Government of National Unity, are becoming prominent candidates among them, promoting a coalition model to governing that may be able to save South Africa from its present socio-economic predicaments. Since apartheid ended in 1994, the African National Congress, ANC, which has been in power in South Africa, has been undergrowing fire for its perceived corruption, incompetence, and incapacity to deal with pressing problems including inequality, unemployment, and poverty. The party's hold on power has weakened despite its historical importance, as many South Africans have grown weary of broken promises and ongoing scandals. Rivals of the GNU put out a cooperative model in which a coalition of parties governs rather than a single party taking the lead. South Africa might gain from this strategy in a number of ways. To start, it promotes responsibility and openness. Partners in a coalition government have to work together to reach agreements which makes it more difficult for corruption to spread unchecked. In order to preserve the stability of the coalition, each party would have an interest in upholding sound governance. Second, opponents of GNU bring a variety of viewpoints and backgrounds to the table. With a wide range of regional, ethnic, and socioeconomic characteristics, South Africa is a complicated country. A coalition administration might provide more inclusive and successful policies by more effectively representing and attending to these many requirements. The GNU model also encourages political stability. A coalition government may ease tensions in a divided atmosphere by including many parties in the decision-making process. When one party's dominance fosters dissatisfaction and resistance, solutions that are more universally acceptable and sustainable may result from this inclusion. Coalition governments, according to its detractors, have been shown to be unstable and ineffective in other nations. The party's willingness to put the interests of the country ahead of their own interests, however, will determine whether or not this paradigm is successful. 
rivals of the GNU have the potential to save South Africa and open the door to a more wealthy, democratic,